Well, that's it for this module of using forests to teach about math. In exploring a little bit about tree height, we also explored trigonometry and we explored different aspects of a clinometer, a very handy tool. We've discovered that it doesn't matter where the tree is located, if it's on level ground, if it's located upslope, or if it's located downslope, there are still some basic fundamental measurements you need to take. You need to always measure the distance between you and the tree itself on the ground, measuring upslope or measuring downslope. That doesn't change. You also need to measure the clinometer's percent scale to determine how much of the tree you're measuring occupies that clinometer percent scale. So you're always going to be taking those two basic measurements, those two pieces of information. However, something else is added when you're working on a slope, upslope or downslope. It's at that point that you need to determine your angle of elevation or your angle of depression and take the cosine of either one of those angles. And that's going to be the factor you multiply things by at the very end when you're working on a slope. Working on level ground is easy. All you need to do is determine the distance between you and the tree, take your percent reading, multiply those two together, and you have it. So, in all, it's a very, very easy method to determine tree height, and the clinometer is a very, very handy tool. So next time in using forests to teach about math, we're going to explore geometry. We're going to take another look at how you determine diameter and radius of a tree using some very basic tools, but we're also going to be setting up what's called a radial research plot. And the question is, how do you set up a radial research plot? How do you determine what size of a plot to use? That's going to give us a reason to explore geometry a bit more. But that's next time in using Forest to teach about math. Uh, this is David Stemper, and we'll see you next time around.